So this is the Live and Ambient Zero, and while it primarily is a wavetable synth, it is also an FM synth in its Atmos 2 structure here. Um, and while it is only a two operator FM synthesis, which makes it really simple and good to dive into and learn FM synthesis with, uh, it is actually really unique and, and complicated as an FM synth due to some unique features as well. So I'm going to dive into those further. I'm going to start by keeping it as simple as possible. And then as the video goes on, it'll get a little bit more into its complexities as an FM synth, even though it is probably one of the most basic and easiest synthesizers to learn FM synthesis on as well. So now I'm going to show uh, how the Live and Ambient Zero functions as a basic two operator FM synth. Um, so basically it has all these different waveforms. Let's start with the a sine wave because that'll make everything way easier in FM, even though it has these really unique capability of starting with uh, different types of waveforms, which makes it actually really deep as an FM synth. Um, but so let's get a really simple uh, sound wave playing here. And then you have the balance, which is how much the modulator is affecting the operator. Let's set that to a medium uh, amount. And then you have the pitch of the modulator. And then you also have a D2, and that goes all the way up, up to noise. So let's clear that. Um, and so there's all kinds of application because it has all these different uh, waves to start with and then to add the LFOs on top of that. So when you're in the FM synth engine or the Atmos 2 engine, of course you can just noodle and, and play around with the parameters and have fun with that like I was showing before. But I, I did want to show a little bit on how you can apply it more musically and more intentionally more like. So you can sort of create tones that you're looking for with more ease. So again, start with start with sine waves uh, always um, just because it, it makes the most uh, ease of practice when you're working with FM synthesis. Um, let's turn the detune off fully for now. Uh, and then you can play with the balance, but I like to keep it around 30 when doing this kind of experiments. So now what I'm just going to do is go through the pitch and show you uh, how the pitch of the modulator can give you some kind of more predictable sounds. Okay, so diving into it now with the balance set to around 30, but you can play with that as you like. Uh, let's put the pitch of the modulator below that of the of the carrier. So now we have a 0.5 ratio, which is nice for bass sounds when this is a lower ratio. And you can play around with the balance to get different kinds of basses. I'll put it back down to 30. Let's raise that pitch to 1. So we have like a one-to-one -one ratio now. We kind of have what resembles a little bit more of like a saw wave, a little bit more of like a buzzy wave. And again, play with the ratio, uh, or sorry, the balance. And then let's try putting it up to two now. And you have uh, what resembles a lot like a square wave. And that's with a, a ratio of two. Uh, of course, everything in between uh, full integers is kind of like these inharmonic sounds. Now when we get to three, we have kind of like a pulse wave. If we go to ratio four, we kind of get like these reedy or woody sounds depending on on the on the balance that you have going there. So you can just you can apply regular envelopes. So for instance, I just have this like Sorry, this more, uh, more just basic FM sound, but if I apply an attack to it, it kind of like brings it in more slowly to mimic something like a clarinet or flute type uh, sound that can kind of help with acoustic modeling and things like that. And then also, and then the higher you get up, let's raise the octave. You kind of get into more of like these glassy kind of bell-like sounds. Let's increase the release a little. Uh, let's put that even higher. Yeah. So you get like those classic like FM synthesis chime or bell-like sounds. Uh, 
let's say at a ratio of around 12 here, you can kind of get like a nice uh, FM piano type sound. reverb to it. Yeah, um, and then of course one of the big things in sound design in FM synthesis is envelopes as well. So there is a way to do that in the Ambient Zero's FM engine. And the way that you do that is you have the LFOs, LFO 1 and 2, but set that to trigger only once. And now you can assign all these FM parameters on a sort of like envelope because instead of the LFO go, uh, changing the parameters back and forth, it's just going in that one direction to a set time. So for instance, let's put the balance low now um, and put the LFO, set the LFO to the balance. So let's, let's do that slowly so you'll see. So you can see the, the balance of how much the modulator is affecting the sound come in over time. And then let's, let's do that to another FM parameter, like the detune. Um, let's, yeah, here we are. So now we can, oh, sorry, that's on LFO 2. So that you can see that's very harsh because um, at the highest point of the detune knob you get noise. So let's put that slow, let's put the depth down a bit. Make that a little bit faster. Sorry, too fast. Let's find a sweet spot here. So you can get these like really complex uh, FM sounds that uh, you, you, you can do with the, with the envelopes as well. Um, you can also apply that to the pitch. That's what this, uh, what this parameter is doing here. Um, so now we have the, pattern, the detune and the pitch are all on this crazy envelope. Or at, at envelopes on different speeds and they can also be envelopes at, on, on different waveforms as well. Let's just, let's just make these kind of random uh, waveforms and see what we get. We'll get some different results. And then we can change the, the position in the harmonic where we're at. In the uh, uh, wavetable as well, which gives drastically different results. And also, we can change the waveform, which gives even even crazier results. So you can do these crazy FM synth sounds with just two operators because you have access to complex envelopes with complex waveforms, uh, as well as combining it with with not just starting with sine waves but also with uh, any, all these different types of waves and changing the position in the, in the harmonics on the, on where you're at in, like the position you're at in the wavetable. So that's a really uh, interesting application of just two operator FM synthesis. So what I'm gonna to try to do now is actually see if we can get something that resembles more like three operator synthesis going. Um, FM synthesis going. Um, the FM purist might not like me for saying this because this isn't exactly three operator FM synthesis, but the idea is that instead of having just your um, uh, carrier and a mod and a modulator, I am going to modulate the modulator with this setting here because this is mapped to the, the pitch like I was showing before. Um, so you have right now, let's say I'm going in, I'll go in the ratio like this. Sorry, I have these crazy LFOs still going, I'll turn those off. Oh, sorry, this is also still on. Okay. 
So I have a more simple waveform now. Um, um, let's get the balance to around 30, like I, I had it before. And now what happens is I am modulating the pitch as fast as possible, uh, putting the depth up high, and I'm going to change the shape. Sorry, let's first look at it with just a sine wave. You can obviously hear the LFO going back and forth, which makes like, like this like crazy kind of sound. But if you put this, change the shape to uh, ramp up or down, it almost makes it an audio rate LFO, which is that the LFO is going so fast, it's not even perceptible really to human sound. So it kind of just blends it into one. So. make the depth a little bit lower so look at the difference you can get so it's like almost another way to have you have a sound source you have a modulator and then you have a modulator modulating the sound source and you can actually get even crazier because you can apply these LFOs to modulate the modulator as well right because you can assign them to the modulator depth, let's say. So, and let's make this as fast as possible and see what we get. And I'm uh, sorry, let's put that shape to the ramp as well. And add some reverb shimmer. So you can get like these crazy FM sound sounds that you could get, but you'd expect really more on a, uh, more complicated FM synth with with more operators you can kind of simulate that with just having these two operators um so that was kind of demonstrating like mimicking in a way three operator FM synthesis having you know two modulators and one carrier so let's try to simulate a uh, four operator FM synthesis now um so I'm gonna make a simple patch here let's just say with the ARP I'll just make a super simple bass patch um Lower the release there. Um, what's happening here? Here we go. Okay. So let's just record the super simple bass patch. Right? Okay. So uh, now what I can do is copy this onto another track. So you can already tell it added a little bit more volume and oomph to the sound. Let's uh, change the harmonic where this one's at. And let's change the, so now the wavetable of the second one, the wavetable position of the second track has changed. Let's make it another balance. So now you kind of have, right? You have, this is one FM bass line going on this track and another more subtle one going on this one, right? So you kind of are having, when you combine them, it's basically like having a four operator FM synth because um, you could change with, Right, let's change the pitch of this one now. Um, you know, change the, we can change the pitch of this one as well. So if you're just using this as a sound source, right, you can get like really complicated, kind of like four operator FM synth patterns uh, going on, right? And then you can add like effects to that.
But one of the best applications is to turning this into an FM drum machine. So a way to do that is to scroll all the way to the final waveform, which is white noise, and turn the detune up to max. So now you just have noise, uh, pretty much, which is great for making drum sounds. So set the release lower. And let's put a high pass filter. And now you have like a great shaker. Great high great hi-hat sounds here now. Um, and let's say if you put a low-pass filter on instead, you have a, a great snare sound that, right, that you can sequence in there. Do snare stutters. And you have all these uh, other features that you can use to make cool drum sounds that because you have control over everything else at the same time. Uh, so yeah, that's a great uh, w one of the great applications of the FM synth engine.